Good morning. Welcome to today's Knee Jerk Devotional for July 1st, 2021. Our passage this morning is Luke 23, 13 through 25. It goes like this. Then Pilate called in the high priests, rulers, and the others and said, You brought this man to me as a disturber of the peace. I examined him in front of all of you and found there was nothing to your charge, and neither did Herod. For he has sent him back here with a clean bill of health. It's clear that he has done nothing wrong, let alone anything deserving death. I'm going to warn him to watch his step and let him go. At that, the crowd went wild. Kill him. Give us Barabbas. Barabbas had been thrown in in prison for starting a riot in the city and for murder. Pilate still wanted to let Jesus go and so spoke out again. But they kept shouting back, crucify, crucify him. He tried a third time. But for what crime? I found nothing in him deserving death. I'm going to warn him to watch his step and let him go. But they kept at it, a shouting mob, demanding that he be crucified. And finally, they shouted him down. Pilate caved in and gave them what they wanted. He released the man thrown in prison for rioting and murder and gave them Jesus to do whatever they wanted. Well, now this is one of those stories that is just hard to read and think about. I find myself again asking, where do I see myself in this story? What role would I have played in the great tragedy of injustice that took place here? Because there is no doubt about it. This was unjust. Jesus did not deserve the punishment he received. He was found blameless. Yet, the shouting mob demanded him convicted. The innocent found guilty. The guilty set free. Where is the justice? I hope I wouldn't be in the crowd shouting for injustice, yet there's a good chance that I would be. In all honesty, I would probably have been with what I assumed the disciples were doing in that moment, standing there in silence, not wanting to face the same fate. I don't really know which is worse, actively asking for injustice or silently watching it happen. You have to wonder why. Why would the shouting mob demand Jesus' conviction and not the conviction of Barabbas? We learn from Matthew's gospel that it was the religious elite that convinced the crowd that Jesus was to be convicted. Why? Well, I think at the end of the day, it comes down to whose authority was being undermined by Jesus. Pilate could see that Jesus was no threat to Rome. He was no violent insurrectionist, unlike Barabbas. But the religious elite saw him and knew him to be one who would undermine their authority and power. His teaching was challenging the religious power structures in such a way that they needed him gone. What is absolutely wild about this whole thing is that it was going exactly to plan. Whenever I read this story, I imagine Jesus making eye contact with the chief priest and dropping the Obi-Wan Kenobi line from Star Wars when he was fighting Darth Vader. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Unfortunately, I think that I walk away from this story, uh, unfortunately, ultimately, what I think I walk away from the story with is that somehow God is at work behind the scenes making all things right. The beauty of the gospel is that God takes what we do, even the ugly and the evil, and redeems for the good and the beautiful. That's grace. Bono, one of my favorite poet songwriters, wrote, Grace, she takes the blame, she covers the shame, removes the stain. It could be her name. Grace, it's the name of a girl. It's also a thought that changed the world. And when she walks on the street, you can hear the strings. Grace finds goodness in everything. Grace, she's got the walk, not on a ramp or on chalk. She's got the time to talk. She travels outside of karma. Karma, she travels outside of karma. When she goes to work, you can hear her strings. Grace finds beauty in everything. Grace, she carries a world on her hips. No champagne flute for her lips. No twirls or skips between her fingertips. She carries a pearl in perfect condition. What once was hurt, what once was friction, what left a mark no longer stings. 
because grace makes beauty out of ugly things. Grace finds beauty in everything. Grace finds goodness in everything. May you find grace today. May you live grace today. May our eyes see the beauty in ugly things. Hey, just a note. During the month of July, I am taking time to recharge my spiritual tanks. So I won't be publishing daily. I may do some, but there will be days that it won't happen. I will return to daily writing in August. Also in August, we will see the return of Doubt on Tap, the Simple Theologian podcast, and Beyond Sunday School. During this break, the Love Well podcast will be released every Monday with interviews of people who love well. So, until the next time we see one another, love well, my friends.